Hi everyone, welcome back to Reading Wednesdays. We are gonna pick up right where we left off in Dragons vs. Unicorns, reading with chapters 11 and chapters 12. So in the last chapter, uh, little Kate, the chemist, um, went through and figured out that she had a bunch of glue on her backpack, which was actually her mom's backpack that she borrowed. Now her mom needs this backpack for tomorrow for this big meeting, it's super important, so little Kate is stressed out and she doesn't know what to do, so she's got to figure out a way to get this glue off the backpack. Okay, chapter 11, it's called One Step Closer. Solutes, they're a noun. Substances that dissolve, like what happens to cocoa powder when you pour streaming milk, called a solvent, to make hot cocoa. Maybe I could plop the backpack into the freezer. If the glue froze, I might be able to break off the fabric lining with my hands. Or I could use a knife to peel it away. When I opened the freezer, I saw ice cream, frozen peas, burritos, and popsicles. Unfortunately, Dad had just gone shopping at Costco. The freezer was jam-packed and there wasn't enough room for the bag. As my grandma Dort would say, now it was time for me to face the music, or rather the glue. I yanked the bottle out of Elmer's glue from the bag and read the label. It said it was water soluble. The glue would soften like butter if I got it wet. After filling our kettle with water, I set the bag on the counter. A little bit later, I poured warm water onto a rag and then attacked a glob of glue. Total fail. Disgusted, I slammed the wet rag into the perfect shining, mom cleaned sink. Then I realized something. In science, when you eliminate one thing, you are one step closer to the solution. A fail was a win. Short chapter. <laughs> chapter 12. Accidents happen. Solution, a noun. When a solvent, milk, dissolves a solute, cocoa powder, you create a solution. In this case, a solution is something you drink, not an answer to a math problem. The warm water didn't do the trick. I paced, I tapped my head. Think, Kate, think, think. Wait a minute. Instead of just thinking, I needed to gather evidence, make observations. This time, I opened the bag all the way and set it under the bright lights on the kitchen counter. I could see that some of the glue had softened, but not enough. Maybe I just needed to keep the hot rag on the glue longer. This time, I let the glue soften with a rag for a long time. A while later, it was time to test out my hypothesis. When I checked the bag, I was able to rinse it all off. Yes, 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 my hunch had been right, but now the fabric was all wet. Racing upstairs to the bathroom, I grabbed a hairdryer from the cabinet. Liam knocked around in his bedroom. After I mentioned cleaning earlier, he had escaped upstairs. What are you doing? He called out. Nothing, I lied as I hustled back downstairs. Well, not exactly a lie, because after my cleaning and drying, I would be doing nothing. As the hairdryer roared on, Mom stepped into the kitchen. What's going on in here? Her eyes lasered on her bag spread open on the kitchen counter and the hairdryer. I turned off the dryer. Your bag got a little wet and gluey, but I took care of it. Oh, Kate, her eyebrows knitted together in concern. I had hoped you'd be more responsible, that you were old enough to take care of the bag. Mom, I'm super sorry, it was an accident. You have to think, you can't always be in such a rush. I was going to protest, but I was the one who didn't check to see if the bottle of glue in my emergency kit had been closed tightly. I'd like an explanation, Mom said in her firm, principal voice. It was too eerily calm. Her dark brown eyes bored into mine, like she could read my thoughts. If Mom had a superpower, it would definitely be mind reading. I blurted out everything that had happened, how I had discovered the gluey mess in her backpack, how upset I had been, how much I had wanted to tell her, but she had seemed so happy about the grant. Don't worry, I said, trying to sound 100% more confident than I felt. It'll be fine. Her eyes looked into the darkened spots on the lining. Really? Okay, maybe not perfect, but almost. Mom combed her fingers through her hair. It was super short with blonde highlights. Once she became principal last year, she didn't want to fuss with her long hair. That meant she didn't want any extra problems. Right now, I was her problem. I hated disappointing her in any way. I blinked back tears. I'm so sorry, Mom. Really, I hope this doesn't hurt your chances. No, I'm sorry. I didn't mean to lash out. It's just that I had counted on you being careful. Oh, honey. She placed her hand on my shoulder. It's always something, isn't it? Thanks for making it such an effort to clean it up. I'm sure it'll be dry by the morning. Furrowing her brow, she inspected the lining. The grant committee won't be inspecting the inside of the bag anyway. In the future, just try to keep things safer. I will. You can count on it. Mom pulled me in for a hug. She smelled like coffee and sweet cream. She always knew how to make me feel better. Soon after project bag cleanup, Birdie came over and asked if I wanted to read Ride Bikes. Of course I did. 
After I caught her up on the conversation with mom, we rode over to Oak Bend Pond. It was the perfect antidote to what had happened. Being outside in nature always calms me down. Setting our bikes against a large oak tree, I noticed that the trees had changed colors. When I squinted in my eyes, the gold, red, and orange leaves looked like dancing flames in the wind. As the branches swayed, I heard blue jays chittering. The breeze picked up and blew ripples across the pond. When you think pond, you might get the wrong idea. It's actually a medium-sized lake, 42 feet deep and over 300 acres. There were deer, fox and herons, owls and muskrats, tall silvery cattails framed the shoreline. I love this place, I said, picking up a speckled rock to skip. It felt smooth and cool in my hand. Me too, said Bertie, sighing happily. Didn't you think the play Red Wealth went today? Yes, definitely. Good. I just wish Avery wasn't so cranky about being Dragon Dance Captain. It made no sense. It's a good part. Two songs and two dances? Plus, she's doing the choreography. Maybe she's in a bad mood because her braces got tightened, I said. In soccer practice, she was complaining about it. Yeah, could be. I know Avery's parents have that fog smoke machine thingy, but I'm going to figure out how to make dragons breathe smoke, so it looks like it's spurting out of their mouths. You could really do that? asked Bertie, her eyes wide. I think so. That would be so cool. Bertie picked up a flat gray pebble, perfect for skipping. Thanks for forcing me to do the play. I think it's going to be fun, even if it meant I got my mom's bag full of glue. You're welcome, said Bertie, who skipped a rock, so it zigzagged across the lake. Now that's a good sign, she said with a wink. This is a short one this week. Chapters 11 and 12 are super, super short. One of the things I love about this book is that Oak Bend Pond, and Oak Bend Pond is based off of the lake that I had or was near growing up. My parents have a cottage on a lake, and I just remember being out there, being on the water, going tubing behind the boat. It was just so much fun. So it was really important to me to make sure I added a piece of that into the story, because um, without it, it just wouldn't have felt real or authentic. And so it's always a good place to go and think about things, and so I hope you have a place that you can go and think about things and make sure you can come up with cool solutions whenever you have a problem. So next week we'll jump right back in with chapter 13 and 14 in Dragons vs. Unicorns. Stay safe out there guys!